Hey everyone, Jasper and Timon here. In this video we'll share how the drums for our debut album came to be. Hi guys, this is Timon. So what was interesting in this situation is that none of the guitar parts or bass parts or any of that were finalized before recording drums. So in other words, Jasper had the freedom to either base his parts on pre-production guitar ideas or to come up with something completely new. I'm very precise when it comes to preparing and organizing my parts. I rehearsed the songs until I knew every little detail, but at the same time, I wanted to keep plenty of room for improvisation and on-the-spot decisions. We went for a relaxed and casual setting in the studio. In this case, we preferred to work together in the same room, so we set up our recording gear facing the drums. This made it easier for us to interact and gave us more room to experiment with different drum sounds and mic setups. It was an interesting experiment. I mean, usually the engineer and drummer are separated by a thick piece of glass and you're working from separate rooms. But as Jasper said, this really brought out a much more comfortable working situation and I believe it really worked in our advantage. Our close friends and colleagues Joris and Yuma assisted us with the drum engineering. They're both great musicians and engineers, so it was really cool and valuable to have them helping us out. Two things that really spoke to me in the pre-productions were the rhythmic patterns and changes in texture. I wanted to accompany those two things at the same time, but in doing so, I didn't want to end up with arrangements that lacked coherency. So, I developed grooves with constant kick or snare beats and used cymbals to accompany rhythmic details or textural changes. This way, my drums got a fundament plus a second layer on top of that, giving my drums some so-called interdependence or polyrhythmic patterns. The biggest challenge was to keep my drums steady, but for most songs also mellow or delicate. I tried to achieve this by playing the songs at a slow tempo, and once I got that down, slowing them down even more. This made it very clear how all the different layers within a song relate to each other and how my drums relate to the music. Practicing this way also helps me streamline the motion I make with my limbs and makes the trajectory they follow more fluid. Besides all the practicing I did, I also think ahead to recording in terms of sound and drum gear. In this case, I was sort of aiming for a mix between old and modern. I really tried to look at what each song required, using different gear, tunings and overall approaches. For instance, I used different snare tunings across the entire album, going from extremely flat 70s sounds all the way to higher pitched ones with lots of tone and ring. Mm -hmm. 
I'm a proud endorser for minor cymbals and percussion, with which I'm very pleased. And on this recording, I played a mix of totally different cymbals, ranging from complex and dark to bright and modern. Just like the snare drum tunings, we've changed the cymbals almost every other song. If you're interested in the exact drum gear I've used on this album, you can click here for an in-depth video. We use two pairs of overhead mics. One pair in an XY configuration, as you can see here, and the other in an AB. The XY pair was used to bring out those really crystal clear transients and gave definition to the more subtle playing on the album. The AB pair was set up a little bit further from the drums and picked up a much more complete and mellow picture of the kit. This really brought out the tone in the cymbals and the ring in the snare and toms. For the room mics we went for a pair of condensers set up in an MS configuration. The cool thing with this is that it gives you a lot of flexibility in the mix when it comes to the stereo image of the drums. For example, you can make a smaller verse part sound more intimate and personal, or let an epic bridge part be really white and lush, and everything in between. So it's really useful for the kind of music we make. Another thing worth mentioning is the resonant kick we used. To be honest, I didn't really know how and if I would be using this in the mix, but in the end I found a pretty cool way of using it. As it wasn't isolated from the rest of the drum kit, it mainly picked up a lot of kick but also snare, and so what I ended up doing was treating this sound to be really dirty and lo-fi and distorted. I used it ever so gently in the mix, but it did give the overall drum sound a lot of character and coherency. I really had a lot of fun working on this record. The intuitive approach and versatile songs are two things that still really speak to me. So I'm very grateful for this opportunity, and I think the results of all the hard work and preparations have been worth it by far. I hope you enjoyed the video footage and our nerdy little explanations. Um, if you have any suggestions for future making of episodes, please let us know and we'll see what we can do. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comment section. Thanks for watching and we'll see you around. <laughs>